Hello YouTube, everybody knows that I'm really lazy and I always want to build things quickly and sometimes we need to build a landing page. Everybody loves Next.js, everybody loves Shadsian UI and more importantly, a lot of times you want to have your user be able to update their own data. This is why Strappy Headless CMS is awesome. So today I want to show you how quickly you can build this whole website with Next.js which is pretty awesome. Now, I'm not gonna build the whole section because I wanna make more videos about how I do that, but I am going to show you what I have so far. Actually, I am going to build all of the front end, literally gonna take us two minutes, and then I'm gonna show you how you can add additional functionality by adding Strappy Headless CMS to allow your users to manage their content dynamically. And what's awesome, you could, could deploy your Next.js project on Vercel, and Strappy, you could either self-host it or use Strappy Cloud. So without any ado, let's jump into it because I wanna show you how awesome this tool is. So I recently on Twitter, because everybody loves Twitter, right? Am I right? Everybody loves Twitter on Twitter or X, X whatever you want to call it. I heard about this awesome page builder called reweb.so. I'll throw the link in the description. I'm not sponsored by this channel. Who is this channel sponsored by? Well, this channel is sponsored by you. Subscribe, hit the like button, join me, whatever. This is cool because if you want to quickly build something, this is the way to do it. And this is specifically for landing pages. This is fairly new. So if you join them on Discord, you could obviously help them with feature requests and stuff like that. But what's awesome about this, if I want to create a website, I'll just click this add section and you have all these different sections that are available. And the magic part of it, after it's created, you're actually going to get a full Next.js project. So let's do really quickly. We're going to start with the header. I like this header. Sounds good. After the header, what do we need? We need a hero section. Hmm, which hero section do I want? I'm going to go with this hero section. Why not keep it classic? Then we definitely want to have some features. I'm going to choose this because this is pretty cool. Do we need social proof? Yeah, let's get some uh, testimonials in here. Yeah, I like this one. And of course, we want to have a pricing page. I'm going to choose this pricing page here as well. And let's add frequently asked questions. And sure enough, let's have a call to action. And let's add a footer. And I'm going to add add section. And boom, look, this is amazingly, it is ready, it is done. What's awesome, you could go ahead and type your content here and update if you want. I'm not going to worry too much about it because we're going to add additional changes to make this content dynamic. But look, this is awesome. You could change your styles via the Tailwind classes here. Uh, your text, whatever you like, you could delete. Like for instance, I don't want these extra card components. So I'm going to go ahead and delete them because I only want three cards because that's basically what I want for testimonials. I don't want six testimonials. Three is enough. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the extra testimonials that I don't need here. Delete, delete, delete. And everything else, I'm going to keep the same. And look how easy this is. All right, you know what? Let's change colors. Let's say sick dark mode. Let's do that. Let's see. And honestly, this looks sick enough. Excellent. I love this. So I'm going to go ahead and click this export code button. It's going to go ahead and export my project. Let's see all the hard work I'm going to do. I'm going to, let's see, unzip the file, install the dependencies and run it. Let's see how that works. So I got the file. Perfect. I'm going to open it in my folder. So here I'm going to unzip my wonderful file. I'm going to move it into my terminal window. Type ls to see what's happening. Run yarn. It's going to go ahead, do its magic, install all the dependencies. Then I'm going to open it in VS Code. Of course, we need to have some random color, more random than that. Nice. Look at this. Our VS Code color matches our theme. And boom, I have my Next.js 14 project. You could see all the components that we have. We have our header, our hero. What's awesome, I'll show you in a different project in a moment, is that we could go ahead and easily update these components to do the things that we want. For instance, we want to dynamically get this content, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that in the project, but I just want to show you how easy you could set up the front end and check this out. If I run yarn dev, guess what? And boom, here we are. We see our amazing front end already done for us in Next.js, ready to go. What I love about this is now I already have my front end created for me, and now I could go ahead and convert this project instead of statically having this data hard-coded by being dynamically generated and powered by the most amazing headless CMS, which is Strappy. 
If you go to strappy.io, you could learn more about how awesome Strappy is. But Strappy 5 beta is out, which is super awesome. You could get early access and try it out. And that's exactly what I did. And just today, hot off the press, Strappy 5 candidate releases here. So I'm going to show you what Strappy 5 looks like. And if you want to see more videos on how to get started with Strappy 5 using this template, let me know in the comments. But today I'm going to do really quick walk through. So I didn't completely finish this project, but it's pretty ready. I have my top navigation, which is fully dynamic. I have this hero section. This is fully dynamic. That means your content editor could change the image, any of this content, including this footer here. If we take a look here inside my Strappy 5, which looks beautiful. I love this simplified UI. You take a look. We have a couple of different pages. We have our global page. Our global page is responsible for our logo text, our nav items. You could add additional nav items here if you like. We have our call to action and we have our footer section. And this is exactly what is powering this top navigation. And this project is deployed. You could go and check it out here. What's awesome, if you see this hero section and you take a look, and here we have our single page for our landing page, which has this block section. I only have one block, but I'm going to continue to work in this project and I'll show you all the changes I'm making. But for now, I only have this hero section block, which has our top link, it has a button links, it has an image, and it has a heading and text. And this is exactly what you see on the website. For instance, here you see build beautiful landing pages. This is exactly the data that is being stored here in this awesome Strapi instance. And like I said, this project is deployed to Vercel and my Strapi instance is deployed to Strapi Cloud. So you'll be able to take a look at the code by clicking on GitHub project repo. When you go to hit GitHub, click the period button. It's gonna open VS Code in your browser. And here you could see the example. The most important part, we already had our front end built for us. The only changes that I made is I created our Strapi backend and I added additional functionality to the front end of my project. If you go to app and you take a look at our layout, you're gonna see that here I call my Strapi endpoint and I get my global page data. This is exactly what you see here in the global types. I'm basically saying, hey, get this data for the top nav and the footer and pass it to my Next.js application. What's awesome in Strapi, you could control the endpoints that folks have access to. So if I gave public access for my global data, which controls my top navigation, my footer, and for my landing page, which shows the landing page data. So I have access to those endpoints and I'm querying that data. And once I get that data, I'm just passing it to my header and footer component. Yes, I did have to do minor changes, but as you could see, the changes were minor. Add a loader function. I just like to call things loader. If you could tell me why, let me know. And once I get the data, pass it to our header and footer component. If we take a look in our header and footer component by going to our components, Literally, all I did is just define my interface for what I want the things to look like, and I replaced the hard-coded data by making it dynamic, by adding it here in code, which is pretty awesome. I did the similar thing inside the hero section, and so for me, work-wise, this was very easy to do, and if we go to our page.tsx file, what I'm doing here, and I kind of future-proofed it to continue to allow me to build out this full landing page. As you can see here, I am following my loader pattern that I like. I just like calling things loader and actions. That's fine. And here I create a block renderer component as I continue to add additional pages. For instance, we currently have our hero section, but once I add the features component, the testimonials, the pricing, it'll be very easy adjustment in my Next.js project because all I have to do is add those newly added components to my block renderer that will render the blocks based on the response that I'm getting from Strapi. So whatever components I have here in my block editor, I'm going to get them inside my Next.js application and be able to easily render them. So I just wanted to give this cool 
update. And if you want to check out this demo project, you could do so very easily is you go to this GitHub repo and I'll actually show you how to set it up locally right now. So you click on the code button. I'm going to use the GitHub CLI in my terminal. I'm going to CD out of this folder and I'm going to clone my demo. I'm going to say demo and just that and click enter. Then I'm going to CD into the demo project and I'm going to run yarn setup to set up all the initial setup. This is going to set up our front end and our back end. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to do LS and open my project in VS Code. And if we take a look at our package.json file, when I ran yarn setup, it went ahead and installed our dependencies for our front end and back end. The one thing that we have to do, you go into your back end project, you're going to see this env.example file. You could go ahead and create a new file called .env and just paste in the code. You could modify all the things, but since they're strings, it's no big deal. And now in our terminal, I'm going to clear the screen. If I do a last notice, we have our C data file, which has basic content for our strappy app. So I'm going to CD into the back end of my project and I'm going to run yarn strappy import file and I'm going to point to our C data. Click yes. It's going to go ahead and import our C data. Now let's CD back out. And if I run yarn dev, this is going to start both our front end and our back end. You'll be greeted with this strappy admin window. Go ahead and make your first account. Paul.bratslavsky at strappy.io. We're going to say monkey, the most secure password ever. Make sure I typed it correctly. I don't know if I did. Click enter and boom, you are inside your strappy admin. And because we imported the data, you're going to see that we have all of our data for our global page, our landing page with our beautiful hero section. And if you go into settings and take a look at the roles, public, you could see that we already going to have all the necessary permission checked for us to make sure that we're getting our data. And if I navigate to localhost 3000 and one, because that's where the project started and click enter, Notice that you see my awesome demo running here, which is cool. And what's awesome, this is dynamic. For instance, we need to add another link to our menu. I'm going to go to Strappy. I'm going to go to my content manager, global page. We want to add new navigation page. For some reason, we want to redirect users for Google for whatever unknown reason, but that's okay. I just going to put it there. We're going to say it's external. Uh, perfect. I'm going to click publish. And now when I go back to my create next application and boom, here's our Google link that I just dynamically added. I don't know why I did that, but that is pretty awesome. So go ahead, check out the project, play with it. If you have any questions, hit me up, let me know what's the deal. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.